Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and today we're gonna be playing with some Digger Mortar decks so basically a little deviation from the previous videos where I played pretty much a high skill, I mean low skill decks where I just play basically a tank in the back and then things pretty much work out for me today we're gonna be uh, way more macro heavy, I mean micro heavy no. It was uh, in previous days where we were, were very uh, macro heavy, like deciding on when to push, uh, when to get uh, a mana advantage and stuff like this. Today we are gonna be though micro, so the goal of this deck is pretty simple, just basically get a damage lead and uh, hold for it to a, for a dear life. And he's playing a bomb girl at the bridge. Uh, once again in this matchup, which is pretty annoying because I'm in pretty much a damage disadvantage and so far he's actually executing my own plan better than I do, even though he's having machine gun, which is uh, a win condition which plays entirely different than uh, what we're doing today. We're gonna be trying to get as aggressive at the bridge, get some damage and then just try to defend and here it is actually my mortar. Uh, connected onto the tower. I'm gonna play a um, lo Rolling steel against the skeleton horde to allow the gunner to survive and thrive on my opponent's tower So that's gonna be a perfect start to, to the game actually. We're still yet to reach a Double mana time and we are uh, finding ourselves in a very comfortable lead. My mortar will delete the uh, bomb girl Obviously, that's the purpose of it the play that I really like to do is like allow the bomb girl to... Uh, actually I don't have a clue why wasn't my mortar shooting but okay. Uh, the play I, I very like to do is allowing uh, bomb girl to get two shots on my tower because pretty much um, I cannot react faster. I can only predict this bomb girl uh, if that makes any sense and... Uh, after that I'm getting a mortar for minus one mana but he still has to respond to that so that's usually a good trade that I like to take and that's gonna be the case in this matchup as well. I'm gonna get a rolling stack in the skeleton horde, very nice to see and I'm gonna also eliminate uh, um, the troublesome farm hut. I'm gonna get a digger poison because it's the pretty much the most violent thing we can do in this matchup. I'm gonna get the swordsman down, it's gonna tank for both towers and at this point we pretty much can play anything because it looks like my opponent just resigned for a good cause and we're gonna just take this win. 54 HP doesn't really matter, I don't need 3 stars, it's gonna be a very cool game to start off this video. And in the game number 2 we're gonna actually face the exact same guy so pretty much he queued into a matchmaking exactly at the same time as I did. Pretty unfortunate for him and let's see if un if fortunate for us because who knows maybe he changed deck, maybe he will adjust his the gameplay, I do not exclude any of these things. He actually gets very aggressive with a uh, ice tiny right here and a skeleton horde at the opposite side. Okay, I was about to say I'm gonna wait for him to play a bomb girl for a ultimate rolling steel value. But since he's not playing bomb girl, I'm gonna just say rolling steel, play shield skellies. Uh, like I said, it's usually better to play uh, uh, troops over uh, spells if you can do so. So that's what I'm doing. Actually, I have to spell this machine gun because it was pretty... Um, big threat to my tower if I uh, didn't stop that and actually saving a swordsman will be a key uh, factor to this matchup. I kinda was uh, playing around with my opponent so far and I kinda didn't uh, notice that he actually has a pretty decent deck I would say like it's obviously not like 100% optimized but he has the right ideas and I kinda have to take this fight seriously. He gets a skeleton for uh, on my swordsman and then pretty nice stop on my digger but I still will manage to uh, delete his mana collector and that was pretty much the target of this digger. I, uh, in single mana I don't really need to get a damage advantage because as the uh, game goes on it's gonna be easier and easier for me to just get a damage. Uh, I just don't want to pretty much die and a machine gun pump is pretty scary deck to go against so I'm gonna just prayer prioritize surviving 
uh, in the first place. He kind of surprised me with his skill before at the bridge high. Oh, that's that's gonna be problematic. That's gonna be problematic for sure. I actually didn't anticipate he's gonna be that aggressive and actually machine gun connect. So that's gonna be oh that's gonna be a very bad position. I'm gonna play a poison just to minimize the damage. And yeah, we we have to come back from this situation because he was very greedy with this skeleton horde uh, at the bridge and absolutely paid uh, off for him. Uh, I'm gonna play ice tiny here. There's no reason not to. I'm gonna play the gunner now that. I was about to say I'm gonna predict the skill of the but he actually predicted me, so very nice play. Like I've said, I kind of have to treat this guy more seriously than I uh, did uh, just now, because he's playing well. He's gonna play uh, poison, so he cannot uh, pretty much do anything about my digger. He just have to brush it off, suck it, and go with, with his own machine gun, because after all, it's pretty expensive combo what I'm playing. I'm gonna play... Yes, sir. I'm gonna get a very huge rolling steel, which still uh, doesn't didn't manage to work out. I actually get a kill on one of the gunners with a mortar, which is very cute. Especially that uh, my mortar was uh, just trying to uh, well uh, uh, get the tanking against the machine gun. He actually gets uh, another skeleton port here, so I'll have to be very fast with the swordsman. If this machine gun were to connect to uh, this time, it would have been a very bad situation for me, but fortunately for me, it's gonna be absolutely fine. I'm gonna get a poison here. I'm gonna actually go for a uh, shield skeleton now. I'm gonna go for a prediction on the skeleton horde, and that's gonna be successful this time. No damage from a machine gun. That's gonna be a very clutch win for me right here, because I don't think I can mess anything up in the last 10 seconds. I'm gonna get a poison down, just to eliminate any skeletons that will come down. And yeah, that's, that's gonna be the uh, tie break this time. Not a tower down, but uh, I'm gonna still have a damage advantage and it's gonna be the game number two. Very well played to a uh, blurred right now player who um, played very, very well. What can I say? Let's jump to the next game. And the next opponent will be Booming Balls with zero medals. Let's see what he's cooking for us. He starts with a Super Ape. And like I've said, if a zero medal player starts with a Super Ape, you usually can just expect uh, him playing Super Ape 2.6. So, actually not a Super Ape 2.6. Okay, so, uh, little deviation from our plan. He's gonna be playing a Skeleton Horde. Still, I'm gonna be looking uh, forward uh, to see how similar to a Super Ape 2.6 this deck is because so far he's just showing all similarities and just playing Skeleton Horde instead of Skeletons probably because they got buffed recently and maybe, just maybe, he thinks that this card is just better than Skeletons. I still disagree because like Skeletons are absolutely, uh, absolutely very strong card because of their mana cost, not because like uh, it doesn't have enough skeletons, it's just the distraction that uh, usually buys you uh, much time that it's uh, kind of paying off. I actually didn't get a mortar down, which is pretty weird. I would say I would love to get a block on this one hit, but well, uh, sometimes it's just not gonna work out. I wanted to play mortar, it didn't pop. Let's just do it now. Once I have a 10 mana and I'm able to protect it with, uh, with troops, I'm gonna play a rolling steel, uh, get a shot on the tower uh, whilst missing 3 skeletons. It's just the trade off that I had to take, but it's not like the end of the world. I'm gonna go for a ice tiny. Uh, you never know what my opponent is cooking for this digger, and so far this gear is absolutely putting in work. He will have to spend a can for that, but I don't even think that was a good decision. Usually against Digger, as a Super 8 player, you want to play in a way that uh, you're kinda... Uh, you're kinda tanking some uh, Digger damage, because you pretty much cannot prevent 100% of that. Uh, and then you're just uh, trying to outcycle my defensive cards, which is obviously the building, uh, the mortar and the uh, shield skeletons, because it's the pretty much a damage in my deck. Here we have an example of a uh, atrociously played gunner, because you absolutely shouldn't do this to your gunner ever. I'm gonna actually go for the offense, because I don't uh, see a reason why I shouldn't. I'm still careful about a skeleton fort, which can, can pop anytime soon, but he's not gonna, he's gonna give up and that's gonna be GG's 
third game in this video. Let's jump to the fourth one, shall we? And the next game will be against Ellie Roan with uh, 20 medals. So uh, it looks like she had to have at least two wins to get to this medal range. Let's see what she's playing. So far, cycling kind of. Uh, cycle cards and then showing up with a bomb girl i don't think that's uh, the most surprising thing that happened to me uh, certainly not i would love this mortar to actually get a shot before the bomb girl but i know the rules and i know that bomb girl will get a two shots before the mortar even gets to shoot if deployed uh, on top of the bomb girl so uh, i couldn't do anything about that i'm gonna get a perfect rolling seal which will counter everything that he has he owns and he owned i'm gonna actually go with digger with the swordsman because it's gonna be tanked and obviously uh, if you can increase the uh, efficiency of your attack for pretty much free you definitely should i'm gonna get with these shield skeletons here to counter apes like you like you see they're putting in work even though i kind of pay uh, twice thrice as much as for normal skeletons it's very kind of reliable dps which i'm going for in this uh, deck Obviously you can play phones here, you can play uh, skeletons like regular ones for faster cycle but I opted to play a shield skeletons because it's like a very safe option with which you pretty much can uh, uh, can be sure that you can defend uh, everything. Obviously there are preferences, I think the skeletons variation and phones variation is also fine. I was playing phones variation for a very long time but I kinda opted to play shield skeletons myself probably because I use skeletons in also other dual decks so I kinda also want to save them for that. But yeah that's gonna be the game number 4, I'm yapping too much, let's jump to the game number 5. And in the game number 5 we're gonna be actually meeting Max 8, so Max 8 is a, a <laughs> top 50 player uh, for sure uh, looking at his medals 1300 very healthy especially that it's not pretty l late into the season uh, he's gonna be actually playing a viking bridge spawn he's uh, playing it pretty uh, frequently on ladder i'm gonna actually get a brilliant traits against his spam at the bridge i'm gonna get a mortar and await his bomb tower because he uh, is playing bomb tower that's one thing i uh, know about him i'm gonna actually get a gunner there's no point protecting this mortar i kinda have to suck it if you know the term of sunk cost fallacy you uh, should know that uh, like protecting this mortar would lead me to a demise also my gunner survives which is very cool i'm gonna let it go though because she kind of fulfilled her job at uh, defeating the uh, the Viking, and that's why she can just uh, casually trade now. I'm gonna play Swordsman against this. I don't think he's actually having a piercing archer, but if he does, I still had a uh, room uh, for like uh, avoiding this. I'm gonna get a rolling steel here. Okay, he's playing Devils, so he's playing Bomb Tower and Devils for his two support cards, and usually playing. Um, Playing buildings in aggressive decks is not good, uh, but I actually like his choice, like he's not gonna be having a very strong offense, but his defense against the various decks, especially like weird mid-ladder spams, will be very decent, so uh, against me obviously it's gonna be weaker because Piercing Archer is an absolute uh, genius of a pick once you get it, uh, actually as I'm saying that He's gonna get a very huge uh, viking connection, so I'm gonna have to get a swordsman here. Oh my god. Yeah, I was just one mana short to make this defense work and here <laughs> my tower just falls and that's gonna be a very hard comeback to make. I'm gonna throw a poison uh, and yeah, that, that, that's gonna... That, that was tough. That, that was tough. Not gonna lie, I'm gonna go for shield skeletons on this. I'm gonna go for a Rolling Steel here, I'm gonna go for a Ice Tiny uh, and right now I pretty much have to get something done with my troops, I'm gonna go for this kind of push, I'm gonna get a Poison here, unfortunately missing Devils, I would love to score them as well, uh, he's gonna absolutely stop me and yeah that's gonna be an L, I didn't want to record this L but yeah, so sometimes it just happens, I 
I think I would uh, win this matchup uh, more often than not, but yeah, we have to leave a GG because he found an opening in my position. I played too greedy because I wanted to just deliver some quality gameplay, but it wasn't quality because he found an opening. So yeah, that's gonna be the fifth and final game of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this recording of a Digger Poison uh, Mortar deck. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed and if you did, make sure to subscribe you are subscribed to my YouTube channel because I post Boom Arena every single day. So yeah, let's just make sure that you don't miss uh, anything. So yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'm going to see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena.